perhaps it's the same with um, types of care and perhaps you show or practice care in different ways. Um, but I think the, the borderline or underlying um, thing is that we move from individualist care mm-hmm. and rather like instead of putting up boundaries and um, moving away from other people and that's how you practice care perhaps isn't the way forward, especially okay. for if we're talking about like queer smart cities or smart queer cities. Um, perhaps it should rather be founded on collective care instead, yeah. where we're looking out for each other and more considerate of how other people might require care rather than how we think to prescribe care. So perhaps here, are we then also not talking about community? It's like yeah, of community course. of practice, community of care, yeah, perhaps. Of so and, and maybe that yeah. is something that comes up in a queer smart city, a smart queer city yes. is is about community and essentially yeah. what does community look like? Exactly. Um, how do we define community? Are we defining it by its current definition? Mm-hmm. Are we thinking of it in a way that is, for instance, we've spoken about like the pillars I like to use to inform my research, which are standpoint theory, intersectionality, reflexivity, and ethics of care. Mm-hmm. So when we're talking community, who is in that community? Sure. Um, but you know, something that's come up in our conversations is intersectionality and inclusivity. And yeah, of course, because I think that's a great point to actually go into the smart city because I feel like um, our standard smart city discourse, especially in African cities, which are like um, the fantasy planning stuff, for example, bringing in um, a lot of like technology to solve city services and um, civic rights, for example, mm-hmm. perhaps isn't the, um, the appropriate kind of path or direction to take yeah that smart cities could be the potential behind smart cities. And I think from a community kind of point of view, embodying or embracing community in our cities, I feel like maybe the smart city, the current smart city discourse falls short in actually enabling space for community to happen. Mm. Um, But I think that there are like initiatives, they they are like kind of glimpses of hope happening already in our cities. And like, for example, the events that we might attend, the queer hosted events, by queer people, for queer people, um, and allies, of course. Um, I think those events are examples of where, like, kind of physical community can take place, and there's mm-hmm. obviously digital platforms as well that also does that, but that our current discourse of smart cities doesn't make a lot of space for that, and I think that's where mm. the queer smart city or the smart queer city yeah. kind of does make space for that and invites that in. And that makes that's me think, you, you know, like that's a counter public. Yeah. What would it look like if that was the public? Yeah. So an example is in, in Cape Town, I find in certain spaces, mm-hmm. you know, one in, in every 100 people feel queer or seem queer or do the queer nod, you know, and like, you know, you're, you're, you're clapped, your people recognize yeah. you. Um, and I got to travel to Berlin last year. Mm-hmm. And it was incredible. It was like one in every five people. Oh, and you're wow. just like, and it's just like <laughs> smiling, greeting the whole time. And you're just like, these are yeah. not your humans because this is not your city. Mm-hmm. But there's something there where it's just like, yeah. you can breathe. And you feel able to take on everything else that's happening yeah. in the world. You know, like being queer is not exactly peachy. <laughs> like it's yeah. not always great in terms of the contexts we find exactly. ourselves in. Mm-hmm. We're being reflexive. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's something that comes up for me when we're talking about designing spaces, uh, thinking about smart cities, is is asking that, that those people who are designing these spaces, whether they're digital or physical, are reflexive about their positionality, the power that they move through the world with, um, and then how they kind of come to shape other people's experiences through their lived experience. Exactly. Um, I have a planning background, and I think for yeah. me that's also the dark side of planning, is that you being so prescriptive with other people's lives without the consideration that you need to take about your your epistemology, your ontology, Mm. and the way that you would actually playing this role um, and affecting like other people in their their physical space. Mm. And that plays a part in their psychological, their being, everything like that, um, outside of that that physical space because of your actions. Yeah. Um, So I think, yeah, that's, uh, I kind of lost my train of thought a little bit, but, uh, do you want to pick it up? No, yeah. I think that's yeah. great because what you, you're saying, for me, what I'm picking up in terms of positionality and how you're mm-hmm. thinking, um, it basically comes down to what I would say to counter that. Mm-hmm. There are two things, which would be standpoint theory. Yeah. So standpoint is looking at people's lived experiences and how that informs kind of how they move through the world, mm-hmm. but also using that as knowledge building, knowledge sharing. Yeah. Um, and then also I would, I would look at participatory design or collaborative design. 
as counter to yeah. other people imposing their views. Exactly. It can get messy. Um, some of my other research is on messiness and actually how to embrace messiness yeah. as productive. I, I love it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you can't use it for everything. You can't just be like, oh, this is research. No, that's just <laughs> not getting your stuff in order. Uh, but messiness is like the discomfort, the emotion, yeah. the trying to get everybody's ideas into the room. Um, messy can be beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And I think participatory is absolutely the way to go. Brilliant, yes. Do you have any examples of participatory or collaborative work in action, perhaps? Um, right now, it's kind of nothing that's released that I could talk about. Okay, um, <laughs> fair enough. But I think that also just does yeah. go into um, yeah, our practices as um, built environment practitioners in mm -hmm. some way, or designers as well, in that um, collaboration and co-production is to be at the forefront of your toolkit yeah. um, for participatory planning in that, um, your whoever you're working with is not necessarily a subject or a participant but rather a collaborator mm -hmm. collaborator yeah. or somebody that's um developing space with you not um by you or for you yeah um and i think that also goes very nicely into ali madanipo's work on public space okay um, i don't think i know this work so they work on on yeah. public space specifically yeah. but um there's this intersection of ownership in terms of when you mm. have public space for example who's taking ownership of that space so it's whose public space yeah. is it um and that's just an interesting segue um yeah i, I think yeah. it takes us to another nice cool space yeah. and i mean i know this is just storming and <laughs> I, I love speaking like this yeah um is like the ownership of data for instance mm. so what yeah. belongs to you like of what you're generating in the world what is yours and some of my other work has been <laughs> on looking at data has been locally owned so like mm -hmm. if it's on a device that it belongs to you yes. um and trying to think about why are we collecting data about people what are we using it for what are the mm -hmm. benefits of that and, uh, and that then i think needs an ethics of care added to it yeah. and also querying because again owning data is about power um, and what mm -hmm. you can do and the kind of hold you have on people's lives um there was something there about ownership yeah it's ownership of space yeah but I think that also goes then. Oh yeah, that's that was your segue into data. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, ownership <laughs> and also with participation, who's involved, who's invited into the room. Um, yeah, that's and I think that's important for the queer smart city dreaming. Mm. Yeah, um, is all those things that we just spoke about. <laughs> cool. Okay, so let's let's imagine. Yes. Like, okay, and like maybe mm -hmm. we just throw ideas in. So <laughs> what would be, so are we working with a queer smart, no, we're looking at a smart queer city. A smart queer city, okay, I think. Okay, cool. Has more room. Okay, great. Mine definitely needs coffee. <laughs> what does yours need? <laughs> more balls. I need okay, more balls. balls? Okay. Um, as in ballrooms. Yeah. <laughs> Understood you. Don't <laughs> worry. Got you. Um, more ballrooms. Yes. I need more dancing. I definitely, more dancing, Cape Town does not sure. have enough dancing so for me. So more event spaces. Yeah. I think also um, we're queer people where queer people are involved in organizing or um, putting those together, I think, yeah. at least as co-organizers. Um, I think that's something yeah. that's important. That's just um, I also think safer spaces, so like spaces that are not um, based on the sale of alcohol, for instance. Mm. You know, so yeah, exactly. I'm not a fan of a board game, unless it's 30 seconds and then I will win. But, you know, creating space for people who want to just meet up for more like um, everyday kind of yeah. experiences instead of just nightlife yeah just well, nightlife events yeah um but if yeah. we had a smart queer city there'd be a lot of queer beings in it already exactly. so most things would be queer anyway and then you wouldn't know. that just be putting a queer lens on literally everything that does happen in yeah. the city yeah um, <laughs> but also dismantling like patriarchy within that as well yeah. and rather just um yeah like these things that we we naturally do maybe we have our hobbies and things but they like queer organized. There's more glitter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and more red. There's more glitter. <laughs> okay. um, yeah. And cats. Can I have more cats? Yes, of course. Okay, I mean, I know they're dog queers. Cats. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah.